I was recently given the opportunity to remix a song from Jeremy Blake, also known as Red Means Recording, as part of a challenge on his patron discord. I wanted to make this video to walk you through the end result and talk a little bit about my remixing process for this song. If you haven't already, definitely go check out Jeremy's video going through each of the remixes over on his channel. Everyone did an incredible job and each remix came out super unique. Thanks to Jeremy for providing such a great palette of sounds to work from. Okay, let's get into it. The first stem that I ended up playing when I imported everything into Ableton was this track, Canadian Boards. Super nice, super calm. I heard this and immediately what came to mind was, okay, I'm doing an ambient track. But I kept listening and I came across this drum track. And something I like to do when I'm working with, I guess just audio files in general, um, but definitely stems is kind of mess with, mess with the files, manipulate, manipulate the samples and see if some inspiration can be found from that. So what I did was I uh, went into the sample uh, over here and I doubled it. And what you get when you do that is this. And when I heard this, my brain basically went in a completely different direction. I decided that I wanted it to be a more up-tempo driving kind of piece. So that really sent me on a totally different path than what I originally expected when I heard this nice little synth rhythmic synth thing. So instead of making an ambient piece around this, I decided that this would be my intro and verse, basically. So for the verse, I immediately came across this arpeggio and I felt like that needed to be a major component. I love the sound, I love how simple it is. As you can see, I renamed it Bubble Arp because, I don't know, it's bubbly, it's nice. You can see from these cuts, I did alter the harmony somewhat, I believe. I think I simplified it, actually, from the original. Um, but anyway, this Bubble Arp is gonna be a main component of the verse. So here we have the vocal. Very nice. I love these background vocals. They sound so good together. I need to highlight another stem here. Super simple, but like so cinematic, and it's this fade in chord. I absolutely love this. Um, you know, not nothing too complex going on, but I don't know. I just love it. I think it sounds so cool. Um, and I use it here to indicate that we are going into basically a new section. What I did here was basically take the chorus vocals of the original track 
and I've turned them into kind of a pre-chorus. My drops are going to be more um, instrumental with kind of a chopped up vocal feel. Here come the drums that I had mentioned. So I'll play the drop and then we can talk about all the different layers. So there's kind of a lot going on there. Let's start with the drums. So this is all original stems, except for this snare, which I added um, because I just wanted it to have a bit more of a punch. Um, the kick here is taken from the original beat. Um, I can stretch it out a bit and you can hear what that used to sound like. Or no, actually. So the kick is uh, actually a sample that I pulled in separately. Um, that noise is from the original beat. Again, sped up uh, to be twice as fast. So if I do this, you can hear. This crash is from stems. Just a really nice cinematic beat that I added shimmer reverb to and some auto pan so it gives it a bit of a stereo image. What else? Uh, this stem from the original. Just have some nice top layer going on. Another arpeggio layer, which is super nice, uh, that I have added some effects to. The bass, which is partly from the original track, just manipulated a little bit with the sub layer that I added. A synthesizer part that I added just to kind of pad things out a bit, which I created in Wavetable. a gently evolving kind of wavetable thing going on. The LFO is bringing it through two different wavetables gently and then also modulating the cutoff of the filter. I am kind of adding some rhythmic variety here with the uh, auto pan the phase set to zero, so it just acts as volume automation. So here's what it would sound like without that. Then it's being sidechained to the kick. And, and this is my favorite part of working on the entire thing, was chopping up vocals for the drops. So here's what they sound like, isolated.
So this was just so much fun. I love working with vocals. I don't really get to do it that often. So anytime I get my hands on some stems or just some vocal samples, I just get super excited. So here are the main elements. So the super high pitched chipmunk thing is a vocal track that I pitched up by two octaves and put a beat repeat on. So here's what it will sound like without that stuff. It's just Jeremy saying lamplight over and over again. But when you pitch it up, two whole octaves, this is what you get. And then when you put a beat repeat on it, completely different. Next track I'm calling Hey Ya. Uh, I actually don't remember what this was originally. So pitched up one octave. And then just copied to make it more of a rhythmic statement. Super fun. Then you have just a few cuts, not as manipulated from the rest of the vocal. Can you please not pull away? Can you please not pull away? Can you please not pull away? All the years of love and laughter. On to the second verse. Pretty basic stuff, uh, just continuing on with the themes that I developed in the verse, uh, just with a bit more energy provided by drums this time. Bass kicks in, ramping up a little bit. left here me anyway, those are the most interesting elements of this remix. Again, I had so much fun working on this. Uh, I'm really happy with how it came out, and I think everyone who worked on a remix for this release did a really, really cool and inspiring job. Thanks again to Jeremy for providing these stems and releasing the remixes. Here is the finished track in its entirety. Thanks everyone.
So hear her voice 